హాయ్ వ్యూవర్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు టుడే స్పెషల్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఇవాళ స్పెషల్ ప్రోగ్రాంలో జస్టిస్ చంద్రు గారితో మన ఇంటర్వ్యూ చంద్రు గారు తెలుసా మీకు జై భీమ్ సినిమా చూశారు కదా అందులో సూర్య ఆయన రోలే ప్లే చేశాడు ఆయనతోనే ఇవాళ మన ఇంటర్వ్యూ ఆయన పేరు జస్టిస్ చంద్రు గారు నమస్తే సార్ నమస్తే సార్ వాట్ ఈస్ యువర్ పర్పస్ ఆఫ్ విజిట్ టు నెల్లూరు దిస్ హాస్పిటల్ ఈజ్ రన్ ఇన్ బై విజయ్ కుమార్ మెమోరియల్ ట్రస్ట్ who is a well known doctor in nellur who was my in my college days with a contemporary student activist in student federation and his brother is a lawyer that way you know the family so in the, after his death very unfortunate death a trust was created by his friends and relatives so they were celebrating a the trust day so they invited me to speak they arrange a talk on some particular topic so today i'll be speaking in the memorial trust uh, topic of their choice and i also came here to renew my old contacts sir how do vijay kumar and you both are related how did you become friends we both were in um, started from student federation which is a student wing of the marxist party and when he was a secretary in nellur i was a tamil nadu secretary in tamil nadu so we had some minimal contact in terms of all india conference and all but we had a common purpose and same age group also we were all in the early 70s we were drawn to left movement at the time of your education yes when we were doing degree that's how you both became friends yeah very distant friend because i know some of his friends were more closer to me than him sir you were in student federation sfi when did you plan to become a lawyer first when i was a degree student i was expelled from a college i discontinued my studies i became a full time uh, sfi worker for two years i was doing full time uh, student politics in the end of my two year i happened to appear in a commission of inquiry against the chief minister of tamil nadu in that commission uh, the issue was the death of a student during lathi charge so during that uh, commission days i was only an undergraduate student not familiar with law so i was getting help of some lawyers but that commissioner who was a retired who was a sitting judge of the madras high court in the end he said if you do law you will do better so slowly i was also thinking that instead of being full time do something good so at that time the best thing was um, joining law college you can do more politics other um, engineering and uh, medical got do lot of studies but law is uh, flexible so i thought best thing is to join law i joined law in 1973 i finished law in 1976 during that period emergency was imposed therefore uh, okay. there were lot of restrictions against press and press freedom right of expression was curtailed so we took law seriously because uh, the constitutional guarantees are being perverted by a congress government therefore after finishing law instead of doing full time politics i became a full time lawyer and seriously started practicing appearing for people who were affected by emergency and then appearing in many human rights matters that's how my law career started yes sir earlier you were fighting later you learn how to fight capacity or uh, inclination to fight started with our left front politics okay. you are fighting all types of injustices including campus excesses but once you are a trained lawyer then you have a skill in your hand so you fight for others the rights which are been guaranteed by laws and constitution has to be established in court so we took to more of fighting as a skill do you often watch movies In the earlier days we used to watch uh, at, but as the work there. as the work of a lawyer started increasing okay. the watching also it will be reduced but then i used to keep track of uh, movies and then the criticism and all that i follow so almost all the contemporary films i follow keenly the discussion out of the film coming to the movie jai bhim sir uh, recently in what it we often see those films like karna pariyaram perumal and uh, the one jai bhim why it is not often seen in telugu movies 
and any other Bollywood movies? That may not be correct at all because uh, communal politics or uh, religious issues have always uh, pictured in uh, movies in different ways and sometimes in a very perverted way because uh, movies were used to send, for example, when, uh, when Mahabharata was serialized, there were a lot of communal politics was also injected around the dialogue, the form of dialogue. So therefore, always the pictures have shown uh, either the Idihas or any other story. It had a very veiled form, but mostly a perverted form. But in the late 70s, there are new wave films that started coming, taking social themes. Once you take social theme, community, religion becomes a direct issue. How you portray such issues is important. You may show. For example, in Tamil Nadu, even in Telugu films I have seen, that uh, the jokes are always on some people belonging to backward community, like a dobi mm -hmm. or like a carpenter or a cycle repairman. At their cost, these people will be laughing. They were, they were perverted uh, way of showing. But later, the new wave directors have started showing real social theme. There are two problems. One is acceptability. If you try to take a film on cost, how much it will be run in a box office? So this is always a question. But the people taste from old uh, mythical form, king and queen, royal families, all that. Now social forms came. So within the society, there are hierarchy of community. So if you try to project one community, others may protest. So there is a lot of difficulty in taking a film and a wholesome social film where certain progressive ideas can be shown like caste atrocities and other things. So it requires a lot of risk and the market, it's actually a commercial film. So Tamil in a sense uh, was an advance I think even to some extent uh, Malayalam, Malayalam yes. which is the first leading thing. While Malayalam films are showing class, mm. poor, rich, things like that. Tamil took to caste, mm. upper caste, lower caste, backward community, scheduled caste. So certain themes came. Mm. After some time, uh, people started getting bored because they were all contrived stories, not real stories. So it is only in the, the new millennium post 21st century, films with real themes, with real people and real stories have started coming and Jai Bheem is an example where a tribal story has received a greater attention than any other box office film. I think this encourages new directors to get into a story. The other thing is, they were making stories for heroes, hero oriented stories. So the Scenes were added to boost the image of the heroes. For the first time, directors started investing on real stories, real social stories. So therefore, I think the acceptability or realism is much more than a contrived film meant for a box office. So I think now, after the result of Jai Bheem, I find even in Tamil Nadu, there are many directors who are willing to look into a good story, good novel, good issues. So this is a trendsetter. Yes, yes, sir. Sir, are there so many cases like that uh, which we have seen in J Beam, or it's just a case? First of all, custodial violence or uh, violence in the lockup is always been there. Okay. Police unable to unravel any truth, they try to attack the victim themselves and then try to extract confessions. Fortunately, in the Indian Evidence Act. A confession before police is not acceptable. So even British did not believe their own police. But what happens is, in order to quickly find results or voice cases on innocent people, police resort to third degree methods. This, this is unstopped. After JB, which took place in 1993, the Supreme Court in 96 has evolved guidelines how to treat pretrial accused. They have given 11 commandments and they have said if the police disobey, you can issue contempt against them. If a judicial officer does not follow the guideline, disciplinary action can be taken. But uh, it never been done so far. The, the, in real practice, police behaves in the very same old-fashioned method. But because of the awareness, because of the media exposure, 
there is a greater amount of uh, uh, coverage or uh, uh, the vigilance is increased now. For example, in, in Satankulam, a father and son were killed in a lockup torture. Now, the next day, the whole press all over the world, this issue became an issue. And since they belong to the dominant community in that area, the issue became very powerful. The government voluntarily went and gave an investigation to CBI. High court started monitoring. Now, trial goes on in Madurai bench. So, things are bad as it was in JB. But the vigilance of the people or media is much more than what it was. Therefore, there is a greater amount of uh, coverage and therefore there is also certain pressure on the police to act in a particular way. Satan Club is a classic example where uh, the trial goes on faster. By the end of the year, the uh, judgment may come in a short period, which was not the case in Jai Bheem. Jai Bheem, the ABS corpus took nine months. The trial, murder trial took place 13 years. Murder appeal took three years. So, after 17 years, the policeman went, went to jail. But that may not happen now. Now, there is a greater uh, vigilance is there. Now, there are new forms of uh, exposure like Human Rights Commission, High Courts are more vigilant. But what is important is the number of uh, death in lockup or the number of encounters have increased. So, in, if Jai Beam is not the only case we have done in my career as a lawyer, I would have done some 15, 16 encounter death cases. But when I became a judge, I would have dealt with 45 cases. So, three times more than what I have done as a lawyer. The only thing a change was being exposed to this kind of issues. We were able to act faster. If, if Jai Beam took nine months, in my court it will take only four weeks. And if Jai Beam gave 2.5 lakh compensation, in my court, it will be 1 million, 10 lakh rupees will be the comp. Because inflation is there. Yes. So, we can quicken the process. But who will civilize the police? Who will make the police have a correct orientation and accept the constitutional guarantee? And that takes long time. You also hold a record of 96,000 cases solved. What is the secret behind that, sir? No secret. When I took charge as a judge in 2006, the pendency in Madras High Court um, was 6.2 lakhs. So, we knew that we are going to deal with this kind of thing. Therefore, we took our work more seriously. We have been appointed to decide matters, not to have some portfolio, then paraphernalia and go around, Bharat Darshan, all that is not there. Or we took our work seriously. So, we also evolved the strategies by which we can group matters, cut short arguments in a limited way work longer hours. So, we were evolving new strategies by which matters could be uh, disposed of. Was your record broken or not? Will it be brokeable? <laughs> Nothing is unbreakable. Everything can be broken. But if you, so far, uh, nobody has crossed my uh, scorecard. I would like to know the reason for your simplicity. I don't know. There is no virtue of being simple. For example, when Mahatma Gandhi died in 1948, before that, I don't think anybody would have talked even about simplicity because it was it was necessary to be with him. If you want to be with Mahatma Gandhi, you got to be simple. The day he took to a single loin cloth, simplicity became part of Mahatma's followers and nobody ever defied him. So, 1948 showed new offices, new uh, richness, therefore everything got perverted. Mahatma's values just not freedom fighting alone, living a simple life, a contented life, a satisfactory life, where you clean your own toilet, you, you have grow your own vegetables, you make your own work in the kitchen. There is no difference between man and woman. Everybody has to do all the work. If you go to any Gandhi ashram, you got to learn these basic values. I don't think anybody defied Mahatma Gandhi in those days. But later, the death of Mahatma also brought death to simplicity. Today, if you want to be a high profile politician, you got to have polyester and things like that. I think um, being simple is nothing uh, great because India is a country where 90 percent of the people live poor by not by choice but by force. So to imitate that doesn't make much difference. 
but what is important is in a country like uh, india where there is so much poverty and poor squalor exhibition of uh, wealth and uh, richness and uh, in the form of dress or in the form of motor automobile it's a filthy way of showing your and vulgar way of showing and also security i think one has to uh, show more uh, modesty to be part of this life and uh, we were grown in that kind of an ideology especially working in a communist party with worker and peasants we have also learned to live like them there is no nothing new on this our public are not very well known about the laws uh, many basic laws we often don't know why what is lagging there i don't think uh, people should know all the laws because the laws are all um, enacted in a minutes time uh, what are the basic laws we should know first of all uh, who should know the law the law makers have to know the law the law enforcers will have to know the law it may be down the line people may know if you give enough publicity they will know what the law is all about but what is today important is we have enough laws in this country which have been quickly made but there is hardly any institution which enforces these laws it's not as if there is a shortage of laws we have enough laws in this country how much the court how much the law enforcers are enforcing this law is more important if an ordinary man doesn't know law means others can always teach him there are political parties which are ngos which are also non governmental or suppose the voting age is reduced from 21 to 18 everybody will go and tell the voter you are now 18 come and vote it doesn't see it takes very short time to know uh, the basic provisions like you wear a mask and go when there is a covid 19 otherwise policemen will do so every law the failure of which there is a sanction so people will immediately know but what is important is the sanction are used instead of learning making the people to learn the process you beat them up you try to put heavy fines these are all uncivilized ways that you should have a awareness actually even the legal aid service authority there is a provision to make uh, legal awareness program but i think every citizen of this country know the basic laws because inherently they are tend to behave in a civilized form it's only a motivated crowd it's only a, a select crowd which try to defy law and then at the expense of the law itself and those crowd knows the law the people who defy law are know the law itself it not the ordinary people never defy any law because most of the laws are part of the natural uh, process of living recently did you watch any movie did you see pushpa the inclination to see film and then for example many movies have come after jai bhum since i am connected with that film every movie producer invites me to some film so i am in the trailer i am in the first look poster i am in the audio release so in some way i am connected So the next there is a press rights about it, so we know. But then uh, I don't watch too many films. But you don't see that movie. No, no. no. Now it's more than nine years since I've retired. Yes. So I do community service. I work in a school. I work in a SCSC welfare hostel. I also write articles, and I've written my biography now. I also teach in law colleges. So now I go to several law colleges, teach subjects for the children. Because there are not good teaching staff available now, all over uh, like Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, I go around. So I stay two three days in the campus and teach them also. So whichever way I want to spend time, I spend time. But the decision is mine. Okay. There is no compulsion for me to work. I do work. You are also a part in Jana Vigyana Vedika, a science forum. Science forum. So whichever group which works on a. concerted ideology i work with them i help them also even it is also a service motto and it is there to educate people i recently i wrote my biography uh, listing out for 45 years of my work in human rights area so yesterday one canadian association has given me award for that and uh, from canada they have sent the award so even our chief minister has welcomed that uh, prize now what is important is that the uh, experience that you gain you try to pass on to the next generation so that's the only work i do okay 
I have been traveling after J Beam. I have traveled nearly 60,000 kilometers. I have addressed meeting in 155 cities in India, and uh, 25 campuses I have spoken. Okay. So, so I interact with all the youth of this country. Okay, sir. It is nice meeting you. So, sir, the viewers, uh, Justice Chandru Garu, Chinnathana Nunchi. I mean, Vidyarthi Dasan Nunchi Guda. Question Chedo and Kalavata in the and every time I question Jesse Waldo uh, uh, Pratidan Yedo Modanga mo follow Kunda. Uh, he used to question on Mata. A question a Ina a question Chedamane de Ina party lo Charadanki, a party in Chibaiti Gravadanki, La Nechkodanki, Andulo a position reach out Anki, uh, a record ninety six thousand cases in a soldiers and record hold Chedanki Opio Padindi. Justice Chandrugar, so simple, so great. This is a special interview. In the next interview, we will see you in the next interview.